So um, I'd like to have a chat with the, with the people who made the films. So please welcome Gordon Fabian, who made Nina, and Pauline, who made The Last in the Line of Fishermen, and Nina, who made The um, Practical Ecology, and Nina, who made Nora Tantin, and Valerur, who made uh, Valkyria. I hope I said that correctly. Can you please come to the stage? Um, so, I, I can see you all, but uh, please feel free to mark if you have a question uh, for any of our uh, directors. And uh, I'll just ask questions, and if you have questions as well, please just uh, make sure that I can see you. <laughs> I think I can see you. Alright, uh, welcome. I'll start with the first film we saw, which was The Last in the Line of Fishermen. Oh, that was bad. Mm -hmm. um, so, I have so many questions for you. <laughs> I mean, first of all, uh, uh, I love your film, and, uh, and uh, I admire you <laughs> based on what you're trying to do. So, so tell me, are you going to keep doing it? Tell us, are you going to keep doing it? Yeah, um, I mean, that's the plan. Um, he's not that fond of it, but um, I mean, the plan has always been to to fish lobster, and that's something that I've been thinking about for many years. Um, so, I mean, it's, it is a 10 year plan. It's it's going to take some time to, for him to get used to it. Um, so, I mean, it's just hopefully I will uh, in one way or another. Um, but I think it's, you know, it will take some time, but um, I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I want to say yes. But how do you plan on doing it? Is it going to be every summer? Are you working? Yeah, no, so I'm planning to, that's always been the plan, to spend October, November, December out of the island mm -hmm. and fish and then work, um, you know, in, in Stockholm where I work uh, normally uh, the other time of the year. So that's always been the plan and it's going to, I mean, hopefully that's the way it's going to turn out. Maybe not this year, um, but hopefully next year. Mm -hmm. um, so this year I'm just going to spend um, November out there to fish. Uh, so I'm going to start, you know, ease into it a bit. So, but I mean, he's, he's, um, he, yeah, he needs some time to get used to the idea of me being there. <laughs> so, be because it seems to me that, that uh, he's very much the gatekeeper in the film. He's oh, very yeah. much the, the one that, that, that kind of, uh, if, if he says that you can't do it, will you still do it? I mean, oh, 100%. Oh my god, yeah, I don't really listen to no. <laughs> um, I don't. But I think, I mean, I started off being, because I didn't, I didn't know how this film was going to end, because I had no idea how he was going to um, take it. I mean, it's something that we never spoke about. Um, so I, I wasn't really sure how I was going to take it. So I just started off with, you know, and the things that we speak about, we haven't spoke about for you know, 30 years. So I, I, I started off being very, like, you know, now I'm right, you're wrong, and then now I'm just sort of, you know, I want to give him the time to actually start to enjoy it rather than see me as a you know, intruder. For you know, for him, it's 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 different. I really think that me coming there um, takes away a small part of his personality. His personality is being lost mm -hmm. So, so I want to make it right. Um, so, and I mean, he's just gonna have to eventually. Except, but <laughs> because it seems that, that the only reason he never taught you that is because you're a girl. Oh yeah, that, that's the. I mean, that's that's the, the only thing. Yeah, that's and that's I mean, out there too. That's there's never been a girl. There's only men, and and uh, I think it's you know it's it's the way it's always been, and uh, it's so easy I think for him to go. Well, you don't want to do it because you just want to play with dolls. That's what you want to do anyway. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but I mean, he doesn't, I think it's just the way of life in the small community, that that's, that's what I wanted to make the film as well, because I think that, um, or I hope that people can sort of recognize um, the feeling of, you know, like, um, give me a chance to fail, or at least ask me. Um, and I don't think it matters where you're from, but um, small communities tend to, to have a um, idea. So. Yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you, um, because in the end, which I, I, I found really endearing, because 
because most of the film, I was really trying. It seemed like he, he just he just went along with you on your crazy idea, mm -hmm. kind of it didn't take you seriously until we come to the scene where he actually brags kind of about yeah. you, where he says that he he's proud of you. How did you feel watching that? I even I I, I, I don't really watch it because I get a bit emotional, but um, I think uh, I kind of know that he. I mean, I know that he, he, he means it, but I think um, I think that he realized earlier on he thought that I just wanted to make a movie and that was it. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'll, I'll do this for you, let's make a movie. And then sort of halfway through, because we filmed for, this is my photographer right there, by the way. Uh, and we filmed for, for so many hours, for months and months. And, um, and I think that he realized like halfway in that, okay, she's actually serious. This is not a just a film, because for me the film comes second, like I really want to do it. So when he realized that, he started to be a bit more, like, no hang on something like this, I don't want to sign up for it. So, uh, it, that meant a lot, <laughs> in the end there. Yeah, that meant a lot. That's wonderful. Anybody have any questions for Kyle? Oh, thank you very much, Kavi. Thank you. Uh, well, the next film we saw, I have to remember the order, was Nora Tantan. Um, so, um, Minya, I just wanted to ask you, I mean, is, can you ever be too old to resist, I guess? How did you find her? How did you find Sabine? Um, I had heard of her through friends, so that's Nora, Tam, uh, you should maybe explain what Nora Tante means for those who oh, don't yeah. understand uh, the Swedish. Or how no. would you translate it the best? <laughs> so Nora is, is the name of a small town in Sweden. And Tante is like... Old lady. Old lady, yeah. So Nora is old lady. Um, but I, I can tell you the background why I want mm. to make a movie sure. of a, an old person. Because <laughs> I think this our society is very focused on age. Um, if you're, it, it's bad to be old, and you have to be young forever, which is impossible, if you all know. Um, uh, so I, I think we need good, cool, raw models, like Sabine, Nora um, and um, uh, to, to uh, show that it's awesome to get old too, and that you can um, influence people around you and the world, no matter how old you are. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I wanted to express. <laughs> and so I heard of Nora for a while. Uh, uh, sorry. I heard of Sabine, mm -hmm. that's the name of Nora for a while. And um, uh, I called her up, and we spent some time together. And I got very inspired by her. Um, it's hard not to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I thought if she can be that focused and engaged um, around all her passions, then I could too. Mm. And then I thought, I need to make a movie of her, because I want the audience to experience it. Mm. And how was she uh, about being filmed and, and followed around? She was um, okay with that? Since we spent a lot of time together um, before we were filming, um, she was very relaxed with me. Mm -hmm. So the, the camera didn't bother her at all. Um, but we um, filmed for three days and it was very intense. And um, I'm amazed that she could have the energy for it. She said, I have to have a break, like 20 minutes each day to like lay in bed. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that was all she needed. Because it seems that her opposite is the lady eating the digestive biscuit going, you're the one who does this, and why are you going looking for trouble? For her, it, it seems like she's, she's out there looking for trouble, but in reality, she's really going out there to make some injustice right, what yeah. she feels is unjust. And yeah, and, and with the message that love is stronger than it, yeah. that's pretty nice about her, I think. Does anyone have any, any questions? Yeah. I was just wondering if you are you planning to make uh, some more films about her or she's such a cool character? Yeah, um, um, yeah I've been thinking about it and I have some ideas, so yeah. um, we'll just have to see. <laughs> uh, but there's lots to do about her. Um, I only have four and a half minutes mm -hmm. for this movie. Um, part of a bigger project that Swedish television and um, Swedish uh, film institutes made this year. Um, so it only had to be four and a half minutes. And, um, she's engaged 
in many other areas too. But I had to pick like one, mm -hmm. and then have came this one. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to say your name wrong, and I'm going to say the name of your movie <laughs> wrong, but bear with me. Uh, Val Gurdur, yeah, you, you made Valkyria, yeah. and who are the awesome girls we saw, and, and um, why did you want to make a film about them? I mean, I, they are the only cheerleading team that Iceland currently has, yeah. no? Yeah. Okay. So how, I mean, how did she think of doing this, us, the um, main character? I'm not sure. No. Have you talked to her about it? Yeah, no, no. Um, she was in gymnastics. Okay. Yeah. And she dropped out in gymnastics because uh, also was getting too old. There's so much background there with her depression yeah. and the, when everything that she just mentions yeah. kind of offhand. Yeah. But but I'm guessing that's what prompted her into into doing something completely different. Yeah. Yeah. She is in Africa the school. She's just working like a trainer at home. And you know, on the places some people. Um, and um, yeah. So she's living at home with her parents. So she doesn't make a lot of money and so this is just um, like a passion for her. Mm.
goes forward. And he's the closest person who I know who lived in a developing country in this war during war. And uh, I made several pieces of this kind of social ladder, like being, uh, like my ancestors used to be um, not even only in their house, like farmers, and then he, his father was a farmer, and he's he in the forest industry, and so I prefer academic books. Family. Mm -hmm. So basically, this project is about that. But this pro this film and uh, started with photographs. I was photographing these, these objects, which are numerous. Mm -hmm. Like you have anything, and um, looks almost like art. Uh, the photographs, mm -hmm. I mean the objects themselves. Um, but of of course, he's not his motivation to make them is not that. So so I was starting to think what his motivation. And um, so this film, where he explains them, I think um, somehow that comes through. The, the motivation is just not to create any waste that would go to the waste yard and, and make something out of every piece of waste that he has. I like the letter so for myself because it was uh, from my project space. And uh, he, he denied to take it to the waste yard. And he's still using parts of that. But of course, like the scissors are not very handy. Yeah, I like so, that he so says they're have neither objects handy which are nor easy to uh, use nor beautiful. No, he says they're neither easy to use nor beautiful, but he still does it. Yeah, but <laughs> you can use them yeah. if you set your finger on that side. Yeah, exactly. But I think that it's a great metaphor for the rest of what he does. It's neither like beautiful nor easy to use, but it, I mean, you, you can still use it. You can still make something out mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And of course, well, there's another film related to this where he talks more about his values. Of course, he's aware that he can't really set the world, mm -hmm. even with this reversive project of his own. Mm -hmm. But uh, and he, in that, he talks about, for example, this uh, raft in the Pacific, which eats plastic, and mm -hmm. this kind of inventions. That maybe there's hope, but then in the end, yeah. he's aware that maybe not. No. So that, does he think that it's also up to the individuals? Should we also be, be doing more to recycle like he does? I think he does, yeah, but he's uh, not the kind who's preaching, so he's basically showing an example. He's also, you know, collecting berries and mushrooms, and you know, this kind of guy who's growing everything himself. Not buying a lot. I really like the bird house, I have to say. Yeah. The, the painting part of yeah. my favorite, probably, yeah. of the items. Does uh, anyone have any questions for Mina? Or her dad? <laughs> <laughs> I will uh, tell him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. And then uh, uh, the, the last film we just saw was Mina, and Bart and Fabian are here. Uh, I mean, how can you not love her? How did you guys uh, come to, to meet her and make a film about her? Uh, we had a friend. She, he has a daughter who got Down syndrome. And he said uh, he said to us, uh, she goes to this dance group every Tuesday. So we so we were looking for a little idea for a film project. So yeah. we went down to the dance group and we started, we started the process. First we were thinking to make a film about the dance group, but the more we were going, more we got to know her, and we thought it was quite sweet. But did, has she always had this idea, or was she inspired when she saw your camera? No, she always had this idea. One okay. of her teachers said uh, basically she couldn't really dance because she got some uh, heart problems, so she's uh, always sitting kind of on the, oh, on the okay. side, and uh, she, he said to her, she really wants to make films. She has plenty of scripts. So did you encourage her? Did you encourage we, uh, the, the yeah. best script, kind of? No, she came with her idea, I can, yeah. Yeah, we, we sat down with her and we thought, like, uh, you, we could maybe help you yeah. doing a film. Mm -hmm. So now you start writing the script. Then she wrote the script, script and she came and we looked at it and we talked about it. And then uh, we gave her some light advice, like, because she had uh, too many ideas and we had to concretize them. Mm -hmm. But then she, she, she finished writing and she, she did the cast, as you see in front. We shot it in two days. So down people in front and behind the camera. Mm -hmm. And then she did talking to everything. And she did most of the writing, directing, and everything. I mean, because what, what, what's so wonderful, and it, it's the part that, that's kind of the most wonderful to watch, is that she has clear vision of what she wants this thing to look like. Yeah. I mean, she's very determined that where you should put the music, where you should put the titles, yeah. where you should cut. I mean, 
So, so clearly she has something in mind that she wants to, like she says, watch over and over again when she comes home. Then we wanted to portray that uh, yeah. creative process because yeah. you see those people with us sort of in films and TV settings. They're always staged. They're always put in places and mm. told how to act. We wanted just to portray her from the outside, like uh, objectively, mm. of how she's created. You made a portrait of a director, basically. Yeah. 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 Well, the great little uh, story when uh, the editing, she wanted, we were putting some, uh, she wanted to change the colors of the film, the tone. Yeah. And uh, she wanted pink, some pinkish, uh, so the editor put a little pink and she was saying more, more, more. And the father was in the back room and he came and he said, you need to be careful, she's colorblind. It <laughs> 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 yeah, was so pink. <laughs> she a 17 year old girl would choose to make a love film a film about love is this something that she talked about for herself something that she aspired to have a boyfriend or have a scene between them between them they're really into love and babies basically yeah. as well and so yeah because so what if what, they, they, they ended up having a baby in the yeah. end yeah she wanted to basically the first version of the script she wanted to have a real baby okay and uh, her parents were a bit against her uh, you know, then she brought to the set of her daughter, the one-eyed baby, yeah. the one-eyed doll, and she said, this is their child. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the so problem. So we kind of just improvised the last scene with her. Yeah. And does anybody have any questions? Do you have anything more that you'd like to, sh to share? I mean, I, th I think she's wonderful. It, yeah. it makes so much sense that you, you made a film about her. I hope she continues because... The, the, it's almost like a soap opera what she created. I, I thought there was so much drama, and I hope she continues to make films. We told her to write more scripts. Yeah. I thought it would be musical. All of us were sitting up there. Yeah. 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 At your scheme, yeah. mm -hmm. basically, and they have to work in their own tempo. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Anybody else have any questions? No? Well, uh, a big round of applause. Thank you. So much. Yeah.